This is Pat Tice, WA0TDA, and today we're going to take a look at the RC Forbes software and what the software interface looks like for users of remote base radios. This is a basic guide to just help you navigate the software if you've just installed it or if you're a newbie. When you log on and open RC Forb, you'll see the station list. In the upper left corner, there are several universal controls. The audio volume control slider, a microphone gain slider, and drop downs. The drop downs show connection status, audio controls, control devices, virtual devices, and layout. Of these, we're going to spend the most time right here with the first drop down on the left. This is going to be where we connect to stations and where we disconnect. On these sliders, you can set the volume. This is your listening volume and your microphone gain. But let's return to that connection drop down. Click on it, and you see this plus sign for a new connection. You'll also see My Account, Options, About, and Exit. This is where you connect to a station that you see in the station list. You also use this drop down to disconnect from a station that you've already connected to. In that case, this new connection with the plus, once you've connected, that's going to then show up, if you use this drop down, as a place where you disconnect. Now, let's go back and look at the station list. This will always come up as a list of stations that are active on the remote hams server. You can mouse over a station. Let's say I do that like this. And then double click on it to connect. So you don't have to actually use this drop down to make a connection. There's another way to do it. So you double click on it. And remember, this list is long and has stations from around the world. You can scroll down using this scroll bar on the right hand side. I prefer to have the stations I normally use near the top of the list. And to do that, I can left click on them and add them to favorites, after which they'll show up right here at the top of the list. I'm looking at station W0EQO, W0ZSW, and WA0TDA in this case. Each entry on the list has some important information. The station call sign is there, the type of radio, the location of the actual physical station, and other information that the station owner thinks you should know. Now remember, some stations are for club use, and they don't allow non-club members to use the radio. Some work only on certain bands or certain modes, and you can usually see something like that in this information on the station entry. Uh, for example, here's one, K5KNM, that says Club Station Only, and that's located in Rio Rancho, New Mexico. Well, if you live in Rio Rancho, New Mexico, you might consider joining the club there, and then you can use this club station. But if you're not in New Mexico, maybe you should keep looking for another station. This next one, KG4TN, is in Birmingham, Alabama, and it says 40 meter transmit, no CW or digital. 
Well, it doesn't say you have to be a member of the club, so you can probably use that station if you connect to it and ask for permission to use the transmit. But don't bother if you want to work 75 meters or 20 meters, because this one just says 40 meters. Also, if you're looking to run Morse code on it, you're out of luck because it says no CW or digital. So you can get an idea of the kind of information that these entries have on the list. Basically, though, we're going to be looking for call sign, type of radio, location, other information that the station owner thinks you should know. Now, let's choose a station and double click on it. In this case, I've highlighted WA0TDAIC7300, and I'm going to double click on that by mousing over the desired station to highlight it and then double clicking to connect. Once we do that, the radio interface for WA0TDA will appear. The first thing we see is a pop-up notification from the radio owner. This one tells us to report problems to WA0TDA at ARRL.net. We also see that the radio is powered off and we hear no sound. First thing we do is click on OK to dismiss this pop-up and continue. Okay, so once we do that, we see the radio interface. The power is off, so we find the power button and click that. Now in this station, the power button is located to the upper right of the frequency display, but the controls and the layout that you see here vary from station to station, depending on which are allowed, the type of radio, and how the owner set it up. So, with the power button clicked, it then becomes highlighted, and we see that VFOA is active at 3.925 MHz. The sound starts and it is displayed as a waveform just above the radio. So you see that waveform right here. And incidentally, there's a mute button if you wish to stop listening to the radio. That will stop this display here and halt everything while you maybe answer the phone or answer the door or something like that. But you want to stay connected to the radio. So let's go over some of these basic controls. TXD is the transmit control for this radio. There's a tune button for an antenna tuner, noise reduction, passband clear, which is highlighted here, which clears the passband settings, comp, which is for compression, and that's microphone voice compression on and off. It's a toggle switch. Then we have VFOA and VFOB and VFOA knob, VFOB tuning knob. There's also a test button. If you press the test button, it will be highlighted and that limits the microphone output to VOIP or voice over internet only. No sound will be transmitted out onto the air when the test button is connected. On the left, there are drop downs. Mode, filter width, automatic gain control, preamp, attenuator, CW method, and transmit meter. Again, all these radios and the way the owners set them up are different. So if this radio were not enabled to do CW, some of these controls might be missing. But this radio does do CW, so I have these controls. We're also going to see 
things like sliders and information. So below the frequency display, which is here in the center at the top, you're going to see these sliders. Some of the ones you can see right here in this screenshot are noise blanker level, the noise reduction level, pass bat band tuning outside and inside, and if you scroll down using your mouse wheel, you'll see others like RF gain and so forth. On the bottom, we see information. Information from the station owner is on the left. So when you connect to the station, this is going to show up. And this station owner wants you to know that you need to touch the power button, toggle the power button if there's no sound to turn on the radio, uh, that there's an external LDG A200 Pro antenna tuner, and some information about watching your audio levels. Again, this message is going to be different depending on the station owner. Incidentally, this is a chat box down here. So just below that, you can enter text and press this little send button here down at the bottom center. And your text will then show up in here and replace this other text. That way you can communicate by text with anyone else who's connected to this radio at the same time that you are. And in the center box here, you see WA0TDA, and that means that WA0TDA is logged on as a user to this radio, and you could have many other people logged on too, and all of you can communicate via this text box, or by voice, if you press this test button, you can talk by pushing the push to talk with the test button turned on, and then you've just got a VOIP conversation set like you're using Skype or something. So that can be useful if you don't want your audio to go out on the air. When you are ready to get your audio back on the air, toggle the test button off. And then when you press the transmit button, your audio will go out on the air. Stations that are currently connected are going to be listed down here in the middle, as I said along with these three buttons, send, ask, and help. You use the ask button right here down in the very bottom center to ask if it's okay to tune the radio. Now, since I'm the only one connected at this time, I don't need to use the ask button as a courtesy, but if I had several stations connected here, and maybe you all wanna use the radio to check into a net or something, uh, you would, press the ask button to automatically generate a text message saying uh, that you want to tune the radio here. So it's asking if you can tune. And if indeed, uh, that's, let's say you're the first one on and uh, you want to use the radio and transmit first, uh, then just say, no, please wait, or something like that. So that's how you communicate by text. Over in this corner, on the right, lower right corner, are some CW macros that you can set up. Some are set up for you already. CQ, thank you, 599, and so forth. But uh, you'll refer to the CW, CW operating in the help manual for that. On the far bottom left, that's going to be way in the lower left corner of the screen. There's going to be a memories button that's down in here. And if you click that button, what's going to happen is the list of memories is going to come up here. And you can search the memories. There's a search box here. It says enter text to search. You can sync memories if there are none in the list, and you start out when the first time you connect to a station. Uh, <clears throat> maybe you're going to use this station often, but the first time you connect to it, please sync the remote memory 
And then this list will show up here with the frequencies that the station owner has put into the memories. Now you can display uh, your own memories if you want, but you can add them to the local memories for your PC only. And for that, you click on this local button here, and then you can add memories. There'll be a little dialog for doing that. Uh, you can double click a memory to make the radio go to that frequency. So if I click click on PicoNet, it'll go to 3925. It'll change the mode to lower sideband for me. And that's an easy way to change modes and bands. You can also use the tuning knobs to change frequencies. You've got this big one for VFOB, or VFOA, excuse me, and the small one for VFOB. So VFOA is here, VFOB here, below it. And then there are tuning steps. So if you want to tune slowly, you just leave it uh, where it is at 0 0.10 kilohertz. But you can also click on this as a drop down button here in the lower right hand corner of the radio display. And uh, then you can choose like one kilohertz and then put your mouse wheel over one of these uh, VFO tuning knobs and it'll tune very quickly. You'll tune in one kilohertz increments. Uh, that can help you kind of look around the bands a little more quickly. But for fine tuning, leave it, excuse me, leave it where it is right here. Okay, then on the far left, you can bring up band right here and number pads. They're just hidden kind of over here on the very far left near the upper left hand corner of this interface. So if you mouse over bands, you'll expand this band switch out into the radio display. If you mouse over uh, the number pad, which is this one here on the left below the bands, then you'll bring, bring up the direct frequency keypad, like a telephone pad, and you can just enter like 3925, and this, then you press the enter key uh, on the pad there, and you'll go to 3925 megahertz, 3.925 megahertz. And you can use either of these tuning knobs. If I tune using this one, the radio switches automatically to VFOA. If I just go ahead and start tuning on VFOB, the small one, then it'll switch to VFOB very quickly. So band switching can be done a variety of different ways. If you use the drop down on the upper left to disconnect and exit, that's going to be the quickest uh, thing to do. So you disconnect from the radio when you're finished using it. This is a courtesy. You should remember to do that because if you don't disconnect, you'll stay connected and appear on the user list at the bottom center of the radio, even if you power the radio off. <laughs> so remember to do that. And then you can exit the software down here at the bottom using this exit button. Uh, or you can just go to the upper left corner of this software window and use the little X, just like you X from other things like Microsoft Word or any other application in Windows. So those are a few basics about the RC Forb software interface, and I hope that helps you out with your Windows navigation. Navigation on the Android app is a bit different, and we'll have to do that separately. This is Pat Tice, WA0TDA, hoping you have a fun time on the radio.